Are you ready for your next comedian? Yeah! We saved the best for some point of the show. So please put your hands together for Bounce Thirty-one years old, and none of my doctors have figured out what the hell is wrong with me. <laughs> I told my doctor, for someone who went to medical school for ten years, you ask a lot of stupid-ass questions. <laughs> but Mr. Adams, when was the last time you engaged in sexual activity? If the short bus is rocking, I'm having a fucking seizure. <laughs> for me, sex is like vacation for two reasons. I don't get it very often, and afterwards I think, damn, I spent too much money. <laughs> and I use my parents' credit card to pay for that shit, too. <laughs> I filled out my profile on eHarmony. My perfect match came back as Joda. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was in a relationship a few years back, and my ex-girlfriend was not worried about me talking to other women. She was more concerned about me talking to myself. <laughs> I developed my own criteria for what I look for in a woman. Blonde hair, blue eyes, vagina optional. <laughs> and then I realized I should not be that goddamn picky. <laughs> so if you are over 21, have a pulse and two minutes to spare. <laughs> You are eligible to fuck on the short bus. <laughs> now, whenever I'm at a bar and I introduce myself to a woman, I get one of three responses. I'm taken. I'm lesbian. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I've tried that. <laughs> and I am too tight for my own dick. <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that there is a very good reason for why I'm so sexually frustrated because I haven't had my dick sucked since Boy Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> and I recommend doggy style to whoever I do it with so you don't have to look at me. <laughs> the worst case scenario, all you have to look at is the back of my head. <laughs> I was babysitting a little kid recently, and he asked me, Bounce, do you do drugs? No. Bullshit! Okay, this bag of weed is keeping me from whooping your ass. <laughs> That's my time, y'all. I'm done.
But seriously. You ready for your next comic? Yeah. You like it when I say, are you ready for your next comic? Yeah. Is that catching on? Yeah. Seriously. Are you ready for your next comic? Yeah. Please put your hands together for your next comic. Nathan Thanks. Please put your hands together for Dave Ray Garland. I met Dave a couple of years ago in an AOL chat room for fans of 98 Degrees. He was the only one that responded when I typed ASLB. That's age, sex, location, beard. <laughs> Happy belated Patriot Freedom Day, everyone. Yay. No one really understands that we actually observe Patriot Freedom Day today on the 13th. Why do you guys hate America? <laughs> I'd also like to raise a glass uh, today to my mom's father, he passed away, so this is a toast for anybody who has lost a relative that is a wife beating drunk like Andy Cap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, if you're going to try to give me your phone number later or send me a misconnection on Craigslist, there's one thing you should know that I am divorced. I was I was married for five years to a television. It was kind of awkward. Actually, like the rest of you that are married, I was tricked into marriage. People had a hard time accepting us because we were an interracial couple. And it wasn't because I am possibly human and she is a television, but because I am white and she was a television of color. <laughs> I don't even really want to talk about the honeymoon. No one likes picking glass out of their Johnson at 3 o'clock in the morning. So our, our, our sex life was really horrible. She said I didn't know how to turn her on. And then we started arguing a lot. And she would say things like, you're not tuned in to what I'm saying. <laughs> but I saw her the other day. She was on the front porch with some guy. They looked happy. I hope he knows what he's getting himself into. But I don't want to speak ill of her, because she did have great knobs. <laughs> Hard in the motherfucking hate. <laughs> so, when I got divorced, I also joined an online dating website. It's called Match.com. Maybe you've heard of it. It's really kind of terrible. For a long time, I didn't have any matches. And then one day, I checked my profile, and I had a perfect match. And it was my mother. <laughs> and I didn't know, even know she was dating or trying to date. So I emailed the website and I said, I think there's something wrong. So then they wrote me back and they said, no, there's actually nothing wrong. We triple checked this match three times. That's nine times. <laughs> You guys are perfect for each other. <laughs> so my mom and I have been dating for six months now. <laughs> it's going really great. The sex is kind of awful. <laughs> Work for our commercial soon. But really, that's that's my life, guys. That's all I've got. So thanks for listening to me talk. Put 
Put your hands together again for uh, Nathan Plummer. <laughs> But seriously, are you all having a good time? Yeah! Do you like that question? Yeah! Has it caught on yet? Yeah. I'm repeating the same. But seriously, put your hands together again. <laughs> that was a joke. For a third funny person. Wanda Lee Porter. My name's Wanda, and I'm not a stripper or an African American customer service representative. So <laughs> there was the odds of that. I started using my middle name Lee and became Wanda Lee Porter when I decided to market myself as a rockabilly housewife. <laughs> I eventually got, you know, bored with doing the pompadour every day. It just became another chore, like doing laundry or early morning blowjobs. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for you, honey. I really am. Yes, it's 5 o'clock in the morning and I've had very little sleep. Just remember, these are the same hands that are going to be making your lunch in like 20 minutes. <laughs> To which I think he replied, if I remember correctly. So <laughs> Sweet talker, my man. <laughs> I love that he knows that he can basically say anything to me in bed as long as he says it in a death metal voice. <laughs> He's a charmer. Moms love him. Uh, not my mom, but all of his ex-girlfriend's moms love him and totally want to keep in touch, which, you know, I, it's great, really. I have no problem with it. I think, you know, I think it's sweet. It's not creepy at all when they want to meet him at the motel that they're staying at. <laughs> you know, I think it would be helpful that if you're going to make lunch, the pretense for the get-together, if there's actually a restaurant at the location, <laughs> that would help me get on board that much more. Motel <laughs> props to the Republican Party. I know the Republicans aren't very popular with you young, liberal, artsy types, but really, let's give some credit where credit is due. I would like to applaud the Republican Party for taking steps to embrace the transgender community, as is obvious to me by the elevation of Ann Coulter to unofficial spokesperson. <laughs> Forever changing the face of the GOP gives me hope. That joke is so insulting to the transgender community. They're really <laughs> the I love the whole gay BLT sandwich. Anyone who knows me knows that about me. I like mine on toasted wheat. Sub an untossed salad for the fries. Balsamic on the side. Thank you very much. Leave the toss into me. Wink, wink. <laughs> it didn't really need a wink, did it? I just like wink. <laughs> Aunt Coulter offends me so much now because um, when she's not on right wing radio talk shows um, comparing Obama to Hitler, she's doing stand up. And, um, you know, in addition, to that, she like, goes out of her way in her set to try to out. Anderson Cooper, and I mean, it's sweet little Anderson Cooper. I'm like, come on, honey. You know, Anderson Cooper was like at Studio 54 when he was 10 years old. We all know he's gay, we just don't care. <laughs> and it doesn't make us love him any less, because I think, that I think, though, is the most confusing part to Ann Poulter. I don't think that was her experience. 
I'd like to gag her with her own severed penis. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're wondering how I feel about that. You know what? I'm going to cut my losses and grab a drink. <laughs>
serious. Um, when the comedians was up here, the lady talked about, you know, she was walking down the street with the purse and 12 black guys were walking up to her and she pulled the purse next to her, you know, and the dude I was, the lady I was saying, she was like, you know, that was that's kind of racist to say. You know, she shouldn't say stuff like that. And then and I was like, well, that's not being racist, you know. She was like, well, if you was walking down the street with a purse and 12 black dudes come up to you, wouldn't you be scared? And I was like, well, let's get one thing straight. If I'm walking down the street with a purse <laughs> and 12 black dudes are coming at me, I deserve a beating. <laughs> you need to beat me till I put that purse down. I should not be carrying a purse. I should not be carrying a purse. <laughs> but I ain't mad at it. You know, something about Virginia, you know what I'm saying, like the culture of it. It kind of, you know, makes you profile, you know, different races and everything. But like, I've been in Virginia for a couple years, well, for a long time. I'm not really from here, from New York. So when I got to here, you know, I noticed there's like a lot of profiling. <laughs> I'm not mad at nobody because I'm starting to profile black people myself. <laughs> you know, the other day I'm looking out the window and I see a black guy in a winter coat. And it's the summer, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, this nigga's about to do something. <laughs> cross-colored jackets anymore. It was like, sick. He just got out of jail and they gave him his clothes back. <laughs> you know, I'm like, so, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking out for my safety of the neighborhood, so I'm like about to dial 911 and I'm like, yo, 911, we got a, a black guy out here. <laughs> he looks like he's up or something. <laughs> I ain't got to see no weapon. <laughs> this nigga's up to something. <laughs> he may not have nothing going now, but if you follow him, he's going to have something on the ground. <laughs> Just follow him to his house. <laughs> <laughs> Another instance I had, I'm at the restaurant, one of my um, comedians, Paul Bass, if you follow know. him. We sat down at the restaurant, the table, you know what I'm saying? And the way that comes up, and he, she grabs the chair and moves to the side so that they can sit down in the front while I'm talking. <laughs> but they black, so I ain't gonna talk about them. Me and How you doing? Hey. Do you know what mommy had to call a perk for something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
like, I'm sleeping later, and like the TV comes on all of a sudden, you know, like the alarm. You know like how you sleep, right? And the TV comes on, and then you start dreaming what the television is saying. I'm not, does that only happen to black people? <laughs> 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 like, I'm pretty sure that's great. Anyway, so I'm, I'm like, sleep, right? And then like the BP oil spill is on, you know what I'm saying? They're talking about the BP oil spill. And like, while I'm from White Plains, like BP was like slang for like black people. You know what I'm saying? You would like say BP, you know what I'm saying, black people. So I'm asleep, and then I'm hearing stuff like, you know, yo, BP busts cats. <laughs> and BP spills oil and kills chickens. <laughs> Go from Mexico wants BP out. <laughs> BP is slow and lazy on the cleanup. <laughs> BP, six reparations. <laughs> BP, they just go back to Africa. It's like, oh, 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 oh. It's getting worse. But y'all yo, been a good crowd, man. Before I go, I just want to say, you know, I'm, I've been enjoying doing comedy and meeting people and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, kind of different, period, you know. And like, you know, I'm not really gangster. I'm not gangster at all. I'm not thug. I wish I was thug. But it's like, I, I, I don't do like gangster things, you know, like, I, I like breathing and living, you know, so I don't want to get shot. But I like doing stuff, you know, like like playing Frisbee, you know what I'm saying, Nintendo. I like blowing bubbles. You know what I'm <laughs> and I mean, you cannot be thug blowing bubbles, you know what I'm saying? You will never go to any corner in the ghetto or anywhere and see like a black dude standing on the corner like, hey, yo, Leroy, you going to the bodega? Yo, pick me up some new ports. Some white t-shirts and some bubbles, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You will never see this. It's my hopes and dreams, son. <laughs> The birthday boy, Corey Marshall. for a commercial break. Right now, I'd like to promote an event that is happening this weekend. It's called the F-Bomb Comedy Festival. You look at your table. There's things on your table that talk about it. Performing is Whitney Cummings. You may have seen her on the David Hasselhoff's Rose or on Chelsea Lately or whatever you call it. If you watch that shit. <laughs> John Reeves performing, he's a fucking Hemi guy, he's a redneck bastard, whatevs. Yo, but the next night, Doug Stanhope, he's funny as shit. Joe Hafty's gonna be open up for that motherfucker. You all saw Joe Hafty tonight. Yeah. Choose. And on the John Reeves night, the Hemi guy night, will be Jared Combs. And James Polk, you saw them tonight. I know you're all down, because you're laughing. So there's cards on the table, and if you put it into the machine where you buy stuff, called the computer, and you say DM, you get money off. I think it's like $20 or some shit. It's cheaper than the rec price, so it's good. So you will enjoy the comedy festival. I think it's the First Richmond Comedy Festival, I don't know. Does Richmond need a comedy festival? We'll find out this weekend. <laughs>